Hey everybody, um, today I'm going to do a little review on Love is a Dog from Hell by Charles Bukowski. This was our group read in um, the Discord chat, and I mean I've read it before, so it's fine. And um, I've actually read it twice this month already, and um, it's really good. Um, I kind of wish I picked a different Bukowski poetry book for National Poetry Month. Um, and I was trying to figure it out because, um, this is probably his most popular work as far as the poetry goes, but I don't think it's his best by, um, any means. And so I was looking into it. And I think because this came out at the height of his popularity, um, because you had this come out, then the next year women came out, and the next year um, he was hired by um, Barbette uh, Schroeder to write the screenplay for Barfly, which took them eight years to make. Um, but, like, all of the Notes of a Dirty Old Man stuff had already happened. He had just... I think he was done with um, the L.A. Free Press by then. Um, so, it's just... it's good stuff, and it's like the, I would say the birth of how his poetry would become. So, with your better books like War All the Time, or The Last Night of the Earth Poems, or, um, You get so alone sometimes it just makes sense. Even though that one, um, I think the first half of that book is really subpar to the second half of it. I think they could have placed the poems better in that book. But anyway, so um, I have a couple little flags or... Um, yeah, sticker note flags here. And um, when I did my live stream today, somebody asked me about reading a poem. And I was like, what? And, um, but I think maybe I should to explain why I think certain things are better than others. It makes a lot of sense. So um, as much as it is awkward for me to do so, um, I think I'm gonna, because I think a lot of people just have this, um, notion of Bukowski that he is a womanizing pig piece of crap, like all macho machismo, but really he's just a struggling coward. And I think that's what draws me to him. And I think most people who really like Bukowski see that in him. And that's why they really like him. Um, but I was going through this, and I'm like, okay. Like, if I could pick one poem in here to epitomize what this book is about, what would it be? And um, I came upon The Escape on page 37 of the Echo Edition. <clears throat> and I'll just read this one to you. The Escape. Escape from the Black Widow Spider is a miracle as great as art. What a web she can weave, slowly drawing you to her. She'll embrace you. Then when she's satisfied, she'll kill you. Still in her embrace and suck the blood from you. I escaped my black widow because she had too many males in her web. And while she was embracing one, and then the other, and then another, I worked free, 
got out to where I was before. She'll miss me. Not my love, but the taste of my blood. But she's good. She'll find other blood. She's so good that I almost miss my death, but not quite. I've escaped. I view other webs. Um, that line, um, she's so good that I almost miss my death, but not quite. Um, two lines, actually. That is... Um, kind of, to me, the line that this whole book is about. Um, so, um, that's just really good. I really, really like that poem. Um, let me see. I got some other things in here. Oh, there's another poem in here called How to Be a Great Writer. Um, and it's kind of funny. It's kind of, um poking fun at the question in the first place. Like, um, like, why would you have to ask that question? You either do or you do not. You know, there's not a whole lot to it. But um, the end of it is really good. And I'm just gonna... Um, should I read the line before it on this page? And remember the old dogs who fought so well. Hemingway, Celine, Dostoevsky, Hamson. If you think they didn't go crazy in tiny rooms, just like you're doing now, without women, without food, without hope, then you're not ready. Drink more beer. There's time. And if there's not, that's all right, too. Um, that is awesome. Um, let's see here. What, what the hell was that hooked on to? Oh, this one. Um, 4620614. I'm assuming that was his phone number. And during that time, I would like to say that was probably 213. Um, I think 213 is the oldest... LA area code. And then 818 would be the valley. And then 310 and 424 came in late, much later. Um, I think 310 came out like in the 90s for like the um, South Bay area. Um, like Long Beach and San Pedro. And 562... I think they broke 310 into 562 and 310. Could be wrong on that. If there's any um, area code historians who are also autistic, <laughs> let me know. Um, 424 is like Santa Monica. Um, and that came out way later. Because I think all of Santa Monica was 818. As well as the Valley. And then they broke that up. And then... Um, actual LA proper is 213 and I think they did 232 that might be a dream I might have made that up anyway um I'll just read this whole thing I guess yeah screw it why not because this is to me a look really in his soul now we all know, and there's another poem in here somewhere. Is it in this book or that book? I don't know. There's other poems where he talks about the reason why his number was listed was so he could bang broads. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I honestly think that there's a lot of truth to this one here. So it says, I get many phone calls now. They're all alike. Are you Charles Bukowski, the writer? Yes, I tell them. And they tell me that they understand my writing, and some of them are writers, or wannabe writers, and they all have dull jobs, horrible jobs, and they can't face the room, the apartment, the walls that night. Um, they want somebody to talk to, and they can't believe that I can't help them, that I don't know the words. They can't believe that often now I double up in my room, grab my gut, and just say, Jesus, 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 not again. They can't believe 
that the loveless people, the streets, the loneliness, the walls are mine too. And when I hang up the phone, they think I've held back my secret. I don't write out of knowledge. When the phone rings, I too would like to hear words that might ease some of this. And that's why my number's listed. And I think that's, like, really powerful, but really accurate. Like, um, I don't know if he ever really wanted um, his pain to ease. Because he's one of these guys that I feel like he thought without his pain, he wouldn't be who he was. And so if he lost the pain, he would not be Bukowski the writer. Um, and I think that's kind of why it took him so long to get out of um, like East Hollywood and into San Pedro. Um, let's see, what else do we got here? Oh, this is a real short one. Dog. A single dog walking alone on a hot sidewalk of summer appears to have the power of 10,000 gods. Why is this? And if you've ever seen a big-ass fucking dog walking down the street in the summer with nobody walking it, um... <laughs> uh, okay, and this is the last one I'm going to read. And the reason why I'm going to read this, I'm not going to read the whole thing, I'm just going to read this chunk, because this is this speaks to me personally because i have this problem i don't like to go anywhere because people are all shit and even if they're not a lot of times i don't have the compassion to go oh that guy he might have to go to the bathroom real bad this guy his mom might have died yesterday this lady over here um you know, she might have gotten a car accident an hour ago, and now she's just trying to get on with her day. I don't ever think about that shit until I get home. What I think about at that time, why is that guy an asshole? Why is that guy a dick? Why did that chick just fucking chew me out? Like, that's where I go to kind of thing. So I tend to not interact with people um, physically if I could help it, um, the times I have to is when I have to go get groceries or I have to go to the post office and all that other jazz. But, um, I really am trying to, um, branch out and do more stuff outside where I would interact with people, even though it terrifies me and makes me want to do horrible things. So, um, he got dragged antiquing with some ladies. Um, and he decided that he'd rather go sit out at his car and drink beer, which seems practically normal in the circumstance. So finishing the fourth beer, the ladies came out. They asked me if I was all right. And I told them that every experience meant something and that they had pulled me out of my usual murky current. And that's really big for me because um, I need to really look at everything being an experience and just living. And a lot of you are like, oh yeah, it's just fucking getting up every day, dude. Living life, you know? Um, but me, I, I don't do that because um, I'm afraid of what I will do. I'm afraid of what I will say to strangers. Um, I have a very short fuse and um it's not great i'm not happy about it but the best way i've felt that i could cope with it is just to keep myself from those situations but i've turned into quite the hermit so um i'm trying to better myself so anyway love is a dog from hell um it's a great book um but the thing is is that he got way better after this book um and it's kind of sad that I feel like this was his apex. Um, if he would have left Black Sparrow after this book came out, or after Women came out, and went with like a big publisher, um, I want to say he would have like skyrocketed. He would have been 
just like, and he would have put poetry on the map, you know, like way more so than he has. But I know the reason, the reasons he didn't want to was because he felt loyalty to Black Sparrow, which is cool. But another reason is, is that he felt like the New York publishers would change him and they probably would have, they would have censored a ton of his shit. So, um, it all worked out good and the fam's back. They just went on a walk and that's why I did this now. So, um, I hope everyone's doing well and let me know down below if you read it or if you're gonna and what's your favorite Bukowski book if you have one. So I'll see you later. Bye-bye.